All right. Hi guys. Welcome. Hi. So today on our design conversation series, right? Um, we have here Mr. C L Tan, right? Mr. Chen Tan. Uh, so we'll be talking about today is the topic is introduction to heritage building conservation. Um, sorry, we're up a bit late. Um, we had some technical difficulties, so I think everything's okay now. Uh, so I think uh, Cl, I think I've known you for quite a while, but I think the audience yeah. haven't. So maybe you can introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Yeah, hi everyone, and thank you, Equator College, for invite, invited me for this uh, this sharing. And today, actually, we have a uh, this is more like sharing session. Is not uh, for me. It's like if you have any question, you can you can ask. And later we can discuss about that. Then today we have the top. Uh, the topic for me is uh, the introduction to heritage conservation. So this I will cover a few topics. This uh, more like to uh, introduce what is heritage and how they categorize it. Uh, so later we will. Start, or we can start straight now. Oh yeah, I think we can start whenever you're ready, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I think Mr. C L is actually a registered conservator here under Jabatan Warisan. I think he'll brief more on that a bit later as uh, we go along. I mean, there's yeah. separate things going on yet. So I think we'll wait for the screen to come on live. Uh, so C L, um, how long have you been active as a conservator here in Penang? Yeah, later I think I will uh, go uh, one one session. I will cover about uh, this uh, this career registered conservator. I've been in oh, great. Uh, this, this, uh, this industry for about 12 years. 12 oh, that's quite wow. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but <laughs> I but I, I hope that we have a newcomer to join us after this because uh, now a little I will, I will share total how many registered conservation, uh, con conservators in Malaysia. Then oh, you great. know, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we can go ahead whenever you're ready. Yeah. Okay. So today our topic is about the introduction to heritage building conservation. So this, uh, so all of this is heritage, is tangible heritage. So why we need to conserve the heritage? Later we discuss about that. So today's topic we discuss about the principle of heritage building conservation, the categorization of the heritage building, the heritage building conservation process inappropriate use of building material this is very important if you use the wrong materials for the heritage building you may cause more damage to the building you are not concerned but you damage the building okay, ah, so, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry uh, okay. Uh, yeah. if i cut in okay, just now you were talking about tangible heritage right? so what exactly is tangible heritage is there an intangible heritage as well uh, yeah actually when you talk about heritage we have to uh, two, two, uh, two types one is tangible heritage one is intangible heritage Tangible heritage means it includes buildings, monuments, archaeological sites, or some site that is uh, like the, the object. Means that you can touch is the object. Okay. So, uh, so basically, it's something that you can heritage. touch with your hand, la, Basically, right? Yes. That intangible more to culture means that like uh, some like the performance, performance art that related to the, the uh, cultural right. cultural dance. Huh? So that is more to intangible heritage. But today we focus on tangible heritage. And we focus on the building. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Okay, first, actually, principle of heritage building conservation, they, they cover a lot, but today we, we need to know what means by conservation, the definition of conservation. So, by UNESCO, we have the, uh, during the conference in 1972, they already have a definition for conservation. Like, what is conservation? It's a guardianship providing for maintenance, preservation. Or protection from being destroyed or changed in an appropriate manner. Inappropriate means that sometimes our our intention is good. We want to preserve, we want to conserve the heritage. But sometimes due to wrong material, wrong technique, then we cause damages. Okay. Oh, heritage so I mean, when you talk about preservation, right? It's not just making sure the building is still standing, right? There's more to it than that. Yeah, actually, the conservation and preservation is different. Preservation, if we go through, but today I will not call, uh, cover that uh, definition. Preservation is oh, like okay. we preserve as it as means that we cannot change. The, for example, one building, if you want to preserve it, means that you preserve it as what it is. It means that you cannot change the, the structure totally. You cannot change the use. You cannot change everything. But conserve, but depends. They have the they have the guideline. They have the guideline. Uh, for I see. So preservation and conservation is different. Yeah, yeah, adaptation that adaptive reuse also mm -hmm. different approach, but it's not allowed for the category one and national heritage building. Because adaptive reuse means that you change the use of the building. Like for example, like 
one of uh, the religious buildings, to change the use to like uh, the restaurant, to change the use, that, that may cause more damage to the building, but depends on the on the uh, capacity of the building. Okay. The heritage building conservation actually is a process of protecting and maintaining the heritage building and or site from damage or undergoing work without proper planning and management. So we always talk about not only concern, but we need to think about the management. So before we concern, actually we will have one what we call documents we call heritage management plan or conservation management plan (CMP). So that the, inside the document, the consultants or the 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 the, the, <clears throat> the individual or the teams or what group of people that prepare this document, they need to include or do and don't and what can do, what cannot do for this building. So this will be the guideline for that particular site. So this is a very important page are the CMP. Okay. And preserving the original condition of a heritage building or site together with historic and cultural importance. So this is very important. If you just conserve the building but without uh consider about the cultural importance, cultural significance, that means that like no soul for the building, no soul for the heritage. Just we preserve the we preserve the envelope. So that that is not the the, the intention in conservation. So, what is the main principle in heritage building conservation is as much as necessary, as little as possible. Means that minimal intervention to ensure maximum preservation of existing and authentic physical fabric. So, this is uh, the, the key principle in heritage building conservation. So I give you an example. We try to prolong the lifespan of this building, but we are not. If you introduce too much, change too much, means that that no longer. And consider as heritage. Okay. So we try to we try to save a building, but not try to 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 change everything. Okay. Maybe you can. I mean, here in Penang, right? Are there any yeah. examples that, for example, that you can talk about here in Penang when we talk about changing as much as necessary, but as little as possible? Is there an example here? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So little. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that. Ah, great. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so then when we start, before we start. Uh, restore the building, we start conserve a heritage building. It's very important we need to make research or study on that uh, like for example the historical background of that building, the fabric, the te technology used to build the building. Because previously that means that in heritage building they are not using the post art like the RC concrete. They are not using the the the, the, the technology what we have now. We have uh power link everything for a protein but they are they are not using that type of technology. So we need to understand that technology first before we conserve. We need to understand the architectural design of that period for this, this heritage building before we start proposed design or proposed a restoration plan or the conservation uh, strategy to conserve the heritage building. So like I told this example, architecture significant. So uh, this shop house, this is what uh, in Penang you have a six type of shop houses. Start from early Penang yeah. style, then have a southern Chinese. Now this is southern Chinese uh, shop houses. Then you see that some Chinese shop houses we have the the character it character. Like for example, this is the front elevation, the timber structure. That is the one of the character of this identity of this uh, this this type of the shop house. So on the right hand side, you see that they will change to knuckle window. So as <coughs> as a designer or as a consultant, you must know that which element is the original which one is not so when we replace it we must replace the right elements but not the wrong element then sometimes the one building it may have a few layer of the other uh, the design elements because like building our own house all the same we keep restore restore maybe after 10 years restore it so sometimes how uh, what uh, you want to restore your building to what extent? That is very important as a consultant, as a designer. When you propose something, you must study the background of this heritage building before you propose. Start from your head, the design, the architectural design, the style, the technology, and also the building material. Like so when you talk about this, right, CL? So yeah. how do you determine what is original because a building's lifespan sometimes right especially when you talk about yeah. conservation sometimes it's like hundreds and hundreds of years right so how yeah. do you dictate what is original is it the earliest record possible or is there any other method yeah that's very important when we do the dilapidation studies or we do the to prepare the cmc so when that stage we need to study we need to go do some research on the 
historical background of this building, we can get the information from archives, we can get from the state library, we can get from the other uh, data bank. So we collect all the information, then we analyze this building, when we start build this building, what, what technology we use for this building. Okay, but from the building itself on site, we can get some clue, we can get some information from the technology, from the material, like for example, the, the brick, okay, the arrangement of the brick, then we roughly know that this, this building is built in this period and the elements of the of the building these architecture elements also can give us some clue so from that we collect all the information then we compile analyze it then we will have come up with a, a conclusion that this building is from this period so and also can study from your neighbor building so for example so how you can study from neighbor buildings or some the same area so that that is very important as a designer, consultant or conservator, you need to collect all this information before you propose something. It's not direct go to the them or go to the site, we have a look, oh we, we just change the new one. No, we need to study. Like for example plaster. Is this or uh, the plaster on, on, on the site now is that the original one? Maybe yes, maybe no. So sometimes we need to conduct some scientific tests as well to study the building material and the technology. Like this okay, okay I so show this uh, this uh this uh, this picture here okay from this picture yes. can you see that which one is the original which one is not okay like, so what like exactly this? is are you what exactly is that next thing yeah yeah this building this is one of my project you can see that from this photograph you can see that they have a very like the antique design area on the wall but after okay. we study the historical background we study the old old uh, architectural uh, drawings all old plan, we compare everything, then we find out this is not the, the original design or old design. This is the new, just a few years ago they installed it. Oh. Ah, the so original it looks one old, is the, the but it's not original. Yeah, but originally that that, that is the event, event opening there. Because we still can see a uh, saw term, we see the shape plate there, the shape plate with small uh, holes. Yes. Ah, that is the original. So sometimes it, uh, you need to collect. Uh, conduct some research study but not that straight to the point we, we need to uh open be open-minded uh, all the options of, mm. from the sources and resource as uh, the resource other uh, sources are uh, resources where you get all the information is very important as well it might be the uh, recognized by the government agency or recognized by the uh, uh, authority so but not only from one source you can get from many source in few source then compare there's some kind of source may wrong some books information may be wrong so you need to compare yeah. okay so, so even though sometimes something looks very old on site right um it's not necessarily original to the building right yes okay like sometimes you can get some uh you can get some information on the site as well like for example this uh, this photograph that first part we, we, uh, we, we see this maybe is a new at the uh previously have one door there they cover up but we're not sure is that uh it's the original go there or not so we compare with the old old plan then we found it hey, we will see these two units actually is same owner that's why they have one door there so you can we open this at uh, this opening then you can tell the story mm -hmm. the young generation uh, so this is uh how we preserve not only the building but preserve the history of that building as well okay then this package is original definitely no huh. so sometimes uh we need to you can get information from the site but you need to compare and you need to figure out is that correct the information okay another one uh, this okay. okay this uh this building are no longer there but i have the chance to do the national drone university for this building before they demolish it so you can see that this building so roughly uh, from this uh, the design uh roughly roughly we can see that uh, we can say that it built are uh, in early uh, 20th century okay how do you determine why, that why, yeah, yeah. How do you think that? first thing you see the design of the opening there that is a is a bit like um have the influence for the straight aesthetic style and most importantly is the brick the bone the bone of the brick that you see that the brick is one stretcher one hater one stretcher one hater the lay the lay of the brick Yes, the how the, the brick, brick is laid, yes. Yeah, that is what we call English bond. Okay, one chapter, yes. one header, one chapter, one header. So from this arrangement, we can roughly predict that this building is built in uh, after, means that after 20th century. 
So <coughs> even how the building is constructed. Oh, sorry. Okay, so even yeah, through the methods the building is constructed, you can estimate the timeline, right? So if there's, they're using concrete, or in yeah. this case, it's like how the bricks is aligned, you can estimate when it's built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because ah, it's okay. important, this is a clue, but it may be wrong. You know, sometimes uh, it may be wrong. So this is from this clue, you can try to get more information from this period, then you compare with the information you have. For example, the, the, all the old building plans, you get uh, means that built during that period, early 20th century, then compare the design to, to, to make your statement more to, to support your statement. Okay, so but on the side, I found one slip there. You see that 1939. Uh, yes, uh, so this also one information can support our prediction just now that it means that it's a built after 20th century. It's not, it's not, uh, it's. It, it, Sorry, it's early 20th century. It means that uh, 19 something, early 19th century. But this is, it, it may be wrong sometimes, but this is one of the information we can get from. Okay. So your estimation is all based on multiple different data points, right? You use this, okay, this might be it, but then we need to find from other data sources as well. And then based on the compilation of all that data, you determine what year is being made of, uh, I mean, what year is being constructed. Ah uh, yes. So okay. okay, so this building also uh sorry this photograph for this building, this is uh very interesting. So sometimes no uh no wonder how dilap dilapidated the building, the conditions of the building, it still can give you some information that, that from this uh this photograph here and see that it show you the very good sections, how they construct the you see the cobblestone uh underneath yep. the Bashimadin. Uh Bashimadin, uh, they see that is so some people may say, I mean, may, may thought that the, the cobblestone support the beam there. It's just like, it's not the one piece means that cross section, but sometimes it may be, it's just like that, uh, it's just install cross or pass through the, the columns to support the beam. Okay. So this is uh, what you get uh, from, for the like, uh, from the oh, office, office, actually they have, the, they have some brochure, they have the information. You can you can uh, like for example how to construct the terrace house uh, sorry the terrace for the heritage uh, the heritage building they are not like for example sometimes the shop houses or some heritage building on the first floor you can see that that is a, like the a terrace or open or open uh, like the open court yeah okay or open like flat roof but it's the terracotta house actually that is not uh RC. you can see that underneath is the floor joint simple floor joint then they have the set up using the terracotta house then Lime concrete, then they have the lime mortar street, then they have terracotta tiles. So it's like like the uh it's the appearance from top from the first floor is more like the flat roof, but actually it's not uh RC concrete, but it's the it's the old technique, it's the previous uh, the old building technique. They use the, the timber floor joist to support it. Okay, so just now we briefly go through the, the principle of conservation and why uh what you need to uh uh, how to start? How to start a conservation pro uh, project? Uh, what you need? To, uh, what information is important? So just now we already discussed about that, but it's, uh, just briefly. So now we go to the categorization of heritage building. This is very important. Before you start planning any restoration work or any conservation work for heritage building for her for one heritage building, you must understand not only the historical background but also the status of this building whether this building is listed or not listed if it's listed heritage building what a category of this building uh, because we in in malaysia here actually we have a for the uh, national, uh, department of national heritage the bottom of the Nagara, they have a two uh two uh list, listing there the first one is national heritage later i will discuss more detail that is the national heritage another one is heritage site but for Penang, the Josh Town, we have under SAP, under the RKK and Tengang Kas, Agawasan Kas, they have actually they have the, uh, another a different categorization, uh, uh, can say it's different listing. That is category one, category two, then they have the infill, they have the uh, replacement. So that is a different category. Uh, so heritage category under National Heritage Act 205. This is the what part of the, uh, Category, but not the listing. Later, I'll discuss more about that. 
One heritage, for example, national heritage, it can be heritage site, it can be heritage object, it can be underwater cultural heritage, it can be living person. So living person also can be heritage or national heritage. So the heritage status under National Heritage Act 205, heritage site or national heritage. So heritage can be, heritage site can be declared by the heritage commissioner. But national heritage must be declared by the minister under section 67, uh, National Heritage Act 205. And national heritage, what is different between these two that are uh, these two uh, these two uh, these two status? National heritage can say is the highest ranking of heritage in Malaysia. Okay, if one building is that is listed as national heritage, it means that it contributes to the formation of identity or history of Malaysia. So this is a plot. So sometimes on the what on one heritage building you can see that a uh, warisan kebangsaan, warisan. So warisan kebangsaan means that this building already listed as national heritage. You saw if you see that warisan means that it's already listed as warisan. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in Penang, uh, we we ha uh, we have. Georgetown World Heritage Site. But how many national heritage sites we have in Penang? We have seven. Okay, uh, we have seven. We have the Penang High Court, we have the San uh, San Borders Church, we have the Fort Convalis, we have the Two Kongsi, we have the uh, the Achemos, we have the Madis Kapiankali, we have the Penang Free School. So you may ask me, so in in whole Malaysia we have how many um, uh, national heritage building, building uh, in under building. So what is I have data I have here until uh, January two thousand nineteen, we have sixty six buildings listed under national uh, as a national heritage building. So Penang, nature, we have right? seven. Yeah. So but there are more 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 to come uh, because we did uh, uh, hopefully we have more. Then in Penang we have five heritage sites. Means that Papa Warisan. Okay, we have five. We have the we have Penang City Hall. We have the like in BM. We have one that is the Patunisan Trotokun. Okay, then we have the Paku other uh, our museum buildings at the Pakua Street. We have the Makam Sheikh Omar at Atam. There we have the with uh Queen Victoria Memorial Stock Tower. So this is heritage okay. site in Penang. So what exactly is the difference between a heritage site and a heritage building? Because I think it. The distinction might not be exactly clear. Yeah, so they have they have a type uh, they have a criteria for it. But sometimes people may not understand that a uh, heritage building must be over hundred years. Actually, no. If you if you go through uh, the National Heritage Act, actually it's not uh, they didn't have any 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 requirement or criteria that you must more than hundred years. No, I give you one example: oh. the Parliament Building of Malaysia. That is heritage National Heritage. So is that. Is that more than hundred years? No. Yeah, I think it's sixties, uh, fifties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not necessarily much more than hundred years. So in fact, uh, the criteria for national heritage or heritage site is is more more on the historical background, but not more on the 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 the, the, the lifespan of that building. Okay. I see. So Joshua Heritage Site. So how to be a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So this is the criteria, 10 criteria. You must fulfill at least one, or at least one to make it. But Dosa and Malacca, we fulfill three. Under criteria number two, means that the Malacca and Dosa represent additional examples of multicultural trading towns in East and Southwest Asia. Okay, so you can, uh, actually this all information is on, you can easily get on, on the website of the GWHI or website of UNESCO. You can download their documents have a look. Okay, I will not go through in detail. Criteria three and four. Okay, four A B and outstanding examples of a type of building, architectural or technological examples or landscape which illustrate significant space in human history. So Malacca and Dosa reflect a mixture of influences which have created a unique architectural culture soundscape without parallel anywhere in East and South Asia. So they demonstrate an exceptional range of shop houses and townhouses. So we can see that we have six parts in Georgetown. So this is we have influence from the West, we have influence from Chinese, we have the influence from Malay, we have the influence from uh, from 
uh, many races. So that this all of this is, is a part of our culture, and all of this reflect in our architecture as well, especially for the shop house. Okay, so this uh, this is uh, the the heritage site, what George Town heritage site. We have a core zone, the buffer zone. Okay, under core zone, under core zone we have two thousand five hundred sixty nine. Okay, units of building. That under the buffer zone we have. 2444. So majority of these buildings in Wuhan, Georgetown Wuhan site are shop houses. I see. So what exactly is when you're talking about core zone and buffer zone, right? Some people not from Penang might not be exactly familiar. What exactly is the main difference about that? Yeah, core zone means that they have the guidelines very strict. Mm. Refer to the SAP. The core zone here. That for example, core zone here. Shop houses, you know that the front facade, but same for the bathroom as well, the front facade. But sometimes, like some, uh, some, some lot, empty lot, like in the buffer zones or outside buffer zone, means that you can see the red, uh, red color line at the yes. boundary there. That like sometimes the, the the building just next to the next on the boundary means that, but it's under buffer zone, but it looks to the. That can be seen from the do. core zone. You need to fulfill the because it's also a part of fulfill the guideline. Why? Uh, because you affect the vista. Vista. Get what I mean? The vista. Of so, like for example, road. here along Penang, it'll be like somewhere along Transfer Road, right? I think that's somewhere right between the boundary. Ah uh, no, Le Le Plain there. Le Plain and Le Plain Ah, and Le Bum Le Le Bum La Yu there. So this ah uh, okay. This part, Maybe we can have one another session. We can share more detail on the guidelines. Uh, so that ah, sure, sure, that would be great. Quite interesting. Yeah, because uh, I found that that is very important to let the public and let the students understand the the process, the process, and what it can do, what it cannot do. Uh, I, I think a lot of people have the general idea that Penang is a, I mean, a town rich with heritage or under UNESCO, but they don't understand what exactly makes it special. Why exactly we are listed? I mean, a lot of people are not fully familiar with that. Yeah. Oh. Hello, Sia. Yeah. And. One stop houses, uh, one stop house at the core zone. Then after that, you fulfill all the guidelines, uh, the conservation guidelines. Open one, uh, like to, can you see any planted cafe in, in the core zone? No. So that, oh. that is uh, how how we protect not only the the tangible side but also the intangible side, and also the, also the local trade. Local trade is very important. If the local people leave the world heritage side, means that 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 is just like the like the monument for me la. it's just like the monument is like so i mean when you talk about the people right i mean that's the intangible aspect of the heritage right i mean all those old old uncles staying in the heritage area doing their trades shoes joystick makers and all those people right so those are the intangible aspects of the heritage yeah yeah we need to, we need to consider about the use as well okay, uh, okay. so this is uh if you go through the sat you can see that they have uh, the, they have the, they really have the mapping for you. You just can chat with the counselor. You can you can chat with the DWI on your lot is under category one or category two or in steel Germans or replacement. So they have that. For example, this. Okay, so category one in Georgetown actually just has uh we have eighty two, eighty two sites. Also not that many. Yeah, yeah this is as uh, basically it's more uh, religious uh, buildings or the NHK building. Like Chu Kong Si, the Fort Thomas, uh, Town Hall, City Hall. Okay. Like sometimes the Capital One building, it might be National Heritage Building as well as mentioned, or Heritage Site under the National Heritage Act. I give you one example, like the Museum Building just now. Uh, yes. So that is the, and also the big, I think Victoria Clock Tower, which is listed as Capital One as well. So Capital One building means building monument, sorry, Capital One uh, site. Under SAP, that is include buildings, monuments, objects, and site of exceptional interest. So, building and monument declared as the entrance are related under the uh, the Antiquities Act 1917, 1976. Now under National Heritage Act, uh -huh. So, building and monuments registered as National Heritage under National Heritage Act also be automatically listed as uh, category one. 
So users are used of category one buildings and site. So for category one building and site, the the use should remain as originally intended. So you can see that you cannot simply change a church or change a temple to become to say restaurant. No, if the building is already listed as category one, you cannot change the use. Any adaptations to the use must be similar use or nature of activity and have minimal impact on the cultural significance of the place and requires the preparation of a planning commission. The submission shall be shall include a heritage impact assessment which includes a cultural impact. So you need to go through TRP. TRP means that technical review panel uh, review all the proposals before you can submit uh, to the normal process. Okay. Okay. So, so in so category we, building, category one buildings, right? What you mean is the category has to be as is, right? You cannot change anything. It ha if it was a religious building, it has to maintain a religious building, something like that. Ah, uh, yeah. And also the material you use must be used at the same material as well. So you cannot have an expansion. You cannot have the like the uh build one more story or annex uh, and uh, the modernized floor inside the building. No, you must conserve. You must conserve the. The original use of that building. Yeah. Okay. okay. So just now you were talking about uh, material as well, right? Like um, you were saying that they have to use the original material, right? But yeah. some of these buildings were built so long ago, right? I think maybe sometimes do you encounter issues where the material is no longer available? Then what would you do then? Okay, I give you some examples. Like for example, for the brick, actually we can still can uh, get the recycled brick or means that old brick uh, salvaged from the other side, other heritage site. Or you can custom make the brick. You know, the brick, clay brick means that use back the clay brick for that building. Same profile, mean the dimension same. Or for the build, uh, for the roof, you have the uh, like for example, if you use the master tiles, then we try to use we must use back master tiles. Master house nowadays we still can we still can get the new master house, yeah, new master house. Like for the wall plaster, wall plaster is the lime plaster. You need to use that lime plaster. So lime still available now. So it's like uh timber. We still we still can find, get the timber. Like for category one building, like timber not only replace back the uh. I see. I think you're dropping a few frames. I think. In. Floor drawers. Oh, we saw that it's original site. Now actually on site is timber, so we change that to timber floor. Under under the national heritage act or on guidelines, need that you need to give use the space. You need to carry out the timber species verification. We can we can engage. We can we can we can engage a Malaysian timber industrial board to okay. come to access on the site in situ or you can send a sample to them to verify the species like for example Chengau. is that Chengau? is that Murabao? is that Balao? if Chengau, then you need to place back Chengau. Chengau we have the strength group category one to seven so Chengau is uh strength group number one so you need to place back Chengau. yeah so but sometimes sometimes uh, some species you cannot get it in the market already mm. or it's a protected species so what you can do you can get the other species with the approval from the authority. The approval from authority, you get other species from the same strand group. So this uh -huh. is uh, then we documented it. So this is very important. So if we really cannot get the same species, okay. So okay. now we go for yeah category two. That is the building object and site of special interest that warrants every effort being made to preserve them, not to damage them. Huh? Like sometimes. Not only building material, it also includes the finishes, meaning that the color scheme. Sometimes we, we consider the building nicely, use lime plaster for the like for the southern Chinese uh, uh style stock houses. But sometimes uh, but you paint it in pink color, can or not, or rainbow color? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is a, a the color scheme also a part of the uh, building fabric. So you must respect it. You cannot simply change the color. So how do we know that? Uh, we already actually they uh like previously like the Mr. Science or other researchers they uh they already conducted some research on the the color scheme. So you can consult them that what period you have the color scheme for this. So for example, that like you have the uh, you have the yellow ochre, you have the uh, the blue color, indigo color, you have the so which one is uh more suitable for your building? So sometimes you need to carry out the uh, the, what we call that uh, color scheme analysis on the site. 
you need to strip uh to scrap the the, the finishes layer by layer like sometimes you need to use the microscope to study the the colors the color oh so i mean like throughout the lifespan of the building right the building might have been repainted multiple times right so you scrape things through try to trace back the original color of the building ah uh, yeah like sometimes some buildings like for example what are they Art Deco building, Art Deco style heritage building. Actually, that is a Shanghai plaster as a finisher. So it's a gray color than table wash. So you cannot paint over that a table wash or Shanghai plaster. You, okay. you must conserve the Shanghai plaster. Or when you re repair, you repair back, re reinstate back the Shanghai plaster without any paint. We can, we can see that a lot, uh, a lot of buildings that is a mis, a mis painted on the Shanghai plaster. Yes, that is, not, uh, that is not correct. Okay, so this is the cross section uh, developed by uh, previously published by GWHI. That's how we have this I believe that they have to, they have to very, uh, a quite, a quite comprehensive, co comprehensive information about the. Yeah, I think you're dropping a few frames again. Ah, yeah. uh, can get consultation or information from their resource center. Okay. Oh, okay. So okay. if okay. anyone from the general public can just go to oh, sorry. So anyone from the public, right, they can just walk to GWHI and learn about all these things. Is is it? Yeah, yeah, they have a brochure, they have a book. Uh, uh actually okay. they have the uh, Mr. Chan previously uh, also have the uh, uh, published uh, one book with uh, GWHI previously. They they are about the shop house. Okay, Penang shop houses, the handbook of feature and material. So this is very uh, important guidelines, important handbook for all the designer, architect, conservator. Like I mentioned the sound, the see the art deco, art deco that yes. some have passed a great color. Uh, so yeah. Different period, they have different technology, so uh, we need to respect it. We need to follow. Okay. And this, uh, these two, these two, uh, these two type are not covered in steel and replacement means that the replacement means that the existing building without any significant value by sanitary re redevelopment is permitted, but this I will not cover. Okay. So, so I hope that all clear about the. The categorizations of the or listing of the heritage building in Malaysia and Georgetown now. So now we move to the next topic: heritage building conservation process. So how to start uh, one conservation uh, project? First thing you need to plan about the documentation requirement. I will see that before, during, after. Before what documentation? What research? What study to conduct before you start? To propose something on that heritage building or propose the conservation uh, strategy or planning on that heritage, or one heritage building okay so this is the requirement under the guidelines on heritage building conservation 2017 by the, the department of national heritage i see that from initial study report dilatation study report and the proposal on the conservation work the pre-conservation work report that like, include the HEP one HEP two HEP three for final report of the conservation work and also the video recording and what means i have to have actually a uh, previously this term is is, is that from uh america that is a uh, previously called historical american building survey but now in malaysia we adapt it we, we, we call it historical architectural building survey okay so okay. Uh, this is what i mentioned uh, before we start uh, this uh this talk, this uh, discussion today about registered conservator. I believe that not many people heard about this uh, this career registered conservator. <laughs> so a conservator must register with the Department of National Heritage. This is very important. We can see that because this is to protect the public interest, and there are forty nine registered conservator in Malaysia. The listing this system actually just start in two thousand fifteen, and so. Uh, when we have we after you set one will uh, want to carry out the conservation work or restoration work on your buildings on your property you need to go to check first the status first step check the status okay. of the your your property is that capital one or is that capital two or that or is a national heritage is a heritage site if yes then next step you need to appoint consultant 
to carry out the research like architect uh, or study on site the condition uh, evaluations uh, the engineer then also the sometimes uh, and also the register conservator like for national heritage project normally they Sorry. two conservator for one project one for client side one for the contractor side so it's like more like the yeah. like that, the public interest and yeah, also one and also cross checking to, okay. that, to, to, minim, to minimize the risk the proposal yeah to minimize the risk that uh or to damage the to minimize the risk any damage on that building so why is it important to appoint a registered conservator uh, so this uh, we have a guideline so the registered conservator not only to uh, give advice but also will carry out all documentation. Documentation is very important because means that when we do restoration, means that we have a lot of information from this building or throughout the process. So all this must be documented in the proper way. Jabatan Warisan Negara or the Department of National Heritage, they have a format for you. So after you compile all of this, then this will be the this will be the reference in future. Uh, like for example, what material, what technology. So when the next time they carry out the restoration, then more easy. They have more information. Uh, okay. uh, the and research has already been done. Uh, sorry, Sandy? No, no, I, I mean, you were saying that they will be using that report as the basis for future conservations, right? So it's yeah. to make a record of the building much easier, right? You have the traceability of everything. Yes. And some, okay. um, this will also will cut down the cost, especially for the, the research and study. You need to redo again all the uh, mm. all the research again that like the study the background so we can cut the cost of the building as well and all these registered conservators mainly you can download on the national heritage website okay the department of national heritage website okay so the documentation oh, 49, is not a lot right for throughout malaysia uh 49 then in Penang we have uh 11 but one oh, is okay. new, uh, already moved to sarawak so left about 10 Oh, that, okay. Yeah. yeah, so now I uh, actually I am the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, among you these in young man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so basic documentation requirement. Uh, this is basic uh, when you start a, a project. Uh, but for category one, normally we need to have a conservation management plan. But uh, what I'm saying here is that more like the like shop houses or others uh like category two. We need to have the dilapidation study report to study what happened, what the building did on this building, what is the damage. And inside the dilapidation study report, we also have, the registered conservator also will propose the, techno, uh, the technique, the restoration technique. The restoration technique is where, uh, how to, uh, for example, how to repair the, the defect uh, based, on, based on the finding on the scientific test. Uh, so all of this will be documented in this dilapidation study report. Then when we start the project, when already appointed the contractor, but before we start the work on site, common the call, uh, common to work on site, we need to carry out the documentation what we call HAP one. HAP one historical architecture building survey. We record down in photography format and videography all the existing conditions before the work. So this is very important. HAP one. Then after we make sure that everything is documented, then. Only we start to have to mean that every single step in the restoration work or conservation work you need to document the project, then you have a head tree. Okay, so okay. Uh, normally prepared by the registered conservator, what we call a work method statement or method statement. So that is uh, the work that uh, we will prepare, for example, how uh, we want to repair the roof. Okay, we want to change the roof or repair the, 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 the roof structure. So the, the registered conservator. The appointed register conservator need to prepare the work method statement for the contractor step by step. First step, what to take down. For example, the category one and national heritage, you need to build the temporary roof first before you start the project. To protect the building first before you start the work, the conservation work. So all okay. of this step by step, you need to prepare the documents uh, 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 endorsed by the register conservator. Then the contractor only allowed to start the work on site. Uh, so after start the work on site, you need to uh you need to uh during during the process of the conservation you need to prepare have to and also weekly report money report and after complete the project you need to some prepare 
final conservation report and HAP three. So this is uh, the brief on documentation document. But some like national heritage, sometimes we have a more detailed like scientific test report. So it's more documented uh, documentation. Okay, so this is a type, uh, this is a some samples of the document uh, the report I prepared previously that every every project we need to have a proper documentation. Oh okay, so it's hard binded. Yeah, so uh so that pre-conservation work, as I mentioned just now, documentation, videography, photography record, dilatation survey, because dilatation survey will help the QS to prepare the BQ as well, because all the building defects will be Documented, will be referred yeah. to and documented and also will be interpreted in BQ or the, 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 the contract document and also the technique proposed, the proposed uh, the restoration technique. Okay, the method proposed in the DLAP by the registered conservator also will be referred by the QS and the architect, uh, uh, the, the engineer to prepare the scope for the for the tender process. Okay, and as I mentioned just now, also the temporary protection or support, not only temporary roof. And we also need to uh, uh, provide temporary cover for the floor or protection to the floor, staircase, fixed or unmovable structure or monument on the site. Uh, so this is to protect. We try to minimize the disturbance towards the, uh, the all the uh, all the elements or component on site. Okay, then investigation and scientific test as I mentioned, uh, like SRS means that actual fluorescent test. So this test will help us to understand the composition of the land. That the wall plaster is that land or cement. And also, how many percent of the sand aggregate, uh, the, uh, the the ratio, and also how many percent of the the the, the lamp inside this sample we collect on the site. So we can analyze from the result that we know that oh, why we we, we there is a lot of crack on the wall or because the lamp maybe is is uh, the, the the sample is no longer three to one or is a uh, standard the the mixture of the lamp or, or for the plaster wall plaster is no longer strong enough. Okay. So SRD means that it's an actual diffraction analysis that will help us to understand the mineral inside that uh, the sample. So the the conservator uh, can get information or for example this granite. Okay, granite they have a different a uh, different uh, elements. Okay, mineral inside inside uh, inside granite. So from the SRD analysis, the result we can compare. Oh, this granite is sourced from where? Okay, it's quarried from where? Is it from? Is it the same with the Phuket ones or is it same with the Indonesia one or other country? So from here we get more information. Okay. That split hammer rebound test that sometimes after we want to propose a new plaster or new uh, new uh, clay brick for the building, we need to test the compressive strength for that uh, the material before we use it on the heritage uh, restoration project. So this will help us to get the readings on the compressive strength of the new material and also the existing material on site to prove that this building still uh, safe to be used or not oops yeah you're dropping okay. a few frames so as you want to go inside the one component like the wall so we need to cut down after we have the treatment on the end so we need to prove that it's effective or not. So we can use a soft test. So uh, sometimes a moisture test as well. And timber city verification, color smoke analysis, uh, we discussed earlier. Okay. So before, uh, this is a summary. Before we have the data patient study report, have one. During what documentation? Weekly, monthly, have two. After is the final conservation report and have three. Okay. So this is uh, just for uh, just. Uh, also the summary that I mentioned, work matter statement. So preparation and approval of work matter statement before implementation or we carry out the work on site. Modern project that like we want to build a, a new building is from bottom to top. Means that we build the we build the foundation first, then slowly we have the column, we have a structure, we have a wall, then we have the roof. But conservation project is from top to bottom. So we will erect the temporary roof to protect the building first, then we repair the roof first, then only start from top to bottom. Uh, so this is the difference for modern project or contemporary project uh, compared to conservation project. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is uh, one of my projects as well previously to Zhongshan. So this is what we did for HEP1. 
to have one sometimes if the for national heritage sometimes in uh, or some building heritage building we need to have a more detailed detailed documentation for have one then we might con we might consider about the photogrammetric geometric uh uh the, the technique approach means that we will we will we will make grid lines one meter by one meter on site for every wall below external and internal so we record <coughs> one meter square by one meter square photograph detail so we can compare we can study in detail is there any minor crack if there's any any uh deterioration or decay of the build uh, of the building material so this we it's more like the archaeological uh, but this is documentation on the building uh, so we make you can see the string there right this is the previous technique uh, but now we use later ah okay uh, so this is amber roof i mentioned just now uh, this is a sand uh, many years ago back it you need to cover up protection floor as well <coughs> then this is the <coughs> uh, the sample collections from site for the scientific test this is for srf test then we <coughs> we might have some <coughs> A uh, secret SOP, uh, we call secret SOP. Okay, for the plaster. So we, we we need to test also. We cannot simply apply on the on the building. Uh, okay. So secret SOP, all the proposal we need to test on site. Okay, we do mock up. We make mock up. Then after one month, we carry out the the snake hammer rebound test. Then we compare which uh which one is the the most uh uh suitable or most uh appropriate competition for for new plaster. Okay, but this need hammer rebar test actually is uh, used for concrete test. Okay, but we that is for heritage conservation and timber uh, uh, verification uh, on site. Uh, so we can the expert, uh, uh, the expert from MTIB, <coughs> they will study the grain. Okay. this from the from the shell then they, they can they can uh, give you a report on what species of the timber of, on, uh, that sometimes we'll do in ring okay from outer layer and the inner layer in one square also have so you have the different 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 approach uh, okay. different techniques and minimal intervention <coughs> like we are not <coughs> like for example that like on the left hand side you can see that this is a flooring the tiles <clears throat> you see appearance <clears throat> you see the color already uh is is, is not in the uh, uh, i can like say it's a fair condition uh, okay but we are not allowed to change all okay which is still is in good condition or is not damaged we try to conserve it we just replace <clears throat> the damaged uh tiles only okay this is what we call minimal intervention it's not means that sometimes uh, some designer will say oh it's not uh it's the appearance may affect the affect the uh their 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 concept or or their theme <laughs> but for heritage conservation no <clears throat> we try to minimize the intervention yeah to minimize keep as much of the original portion of the building as it can yeah and also see for the brick uh, for the wall then see that for the wall there when we remove the wrong materials or inappropriate material on the wall sometimes that for example should be uh it, it should be lime plaster but previous restoration it already replaced it with uh, cement plaster so cement already stick or uh, stick to the brick clay brick the old clay brick is quite brittle so if you keep remove keep hang it that may cause more damage in this case we try to we, we just try our best to mean uh to remove the cement plaster okay you can see that sometimes we cannot uh very cleanly remove all because we try to not damage the the the, 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 the brick okay all the material you must have the proper storage on site you see that the the roof tiles all the material the timbers we, we must have a risk up platform to to remove uh, to, to avoid the damage from the ground to cause damage on the components are dismantled from the heritage building. Uh, this is what we call desalination. This is one of the techniques. Uh. This is what we call cocoon method. Uh, is that we apply this cocoon, then we will we will absorb the salt from the heritage uh, co uh, components like the wall, from the column, 
then we have the we only replace the plaster. Uh, so this regeneration, this process is about one month. We only need to do two times. Okay. And All sometimes right. we might might need dressing them treatment. Okay. So before after, we need for sandal okay? okay. So now we go for the last <clears throat> topic that is inappropriate use of building material. So this is the most important part in uh in heritage conservation. So uh, this photograph okay. uh, sorry, is sorry. Yeah. I think yeah. um, we have about five minutes left. We still need to keep some time for people to ask their questions and answers. Yeah. So well, I think we can continue on first. We have about five minutes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So from this photograph, you can see that previous restoration they cover up the scene. You definitely would be here off. Okay. Like this but without remove the cement plaster this also not are uh, not the correct method okay and sometimes why use lime lime a lot for it's a visible pro uh, product a lot of the damage which carry uh the damage from the ground can be discharged from your building so if you use lime the lime water will be damaged first before the salt damage or damage damage your brick it's more easy for you to repointing means that to replace the mortar rather than replace the brick if you use the cement then you'll see that your brick will be damaged first Ah, okay. uh, if you use the cement plaster, it's actually not stick, uh, will not protect the dampness will push the stock will push away your cement plaster. Then the whole piece oh, of okay. cement plaster will fall down. Just okay, so that. this is the lamp. How to do the lamp you can get from the official office. They have to. Okay, conclusion as much as necessary, at least as possible. So, and also conduct sufficient research before conservation to conserve the authenticity. With the original architectural style, building material and technology as per heritage conservation guidelines, prepare documentation as per heritage conservation guidelines, and implement top to bottom approach in heritage conservation. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, all right. So, thanks. I think it's very was very informative. I think it's something new. A lot of people understood that we. I mean, a lot of people get their public holidays for us being a UNESCO World Heritage Site, right? But a lot yeah. of people don't like, fully understand what exactly heritage is about. Uh, I think uh, we'll open the questions for the audience. So if they, anyone have any questions, you guys can ask. Uh, okay, I think we have one question here, Siap. Okay, I think he was saying that, okay, from JV, uh, why must we preserve the original building? Like, okay, like when we renovate a heritage building, uh, why must we keep it the same? Okay. Um, for example, the Makam Datukok, yeah, when it was renovated, they preserved the very first original design of it. Uh, why? Okay, that's a very interesting, uh, interesting question. Okay, Makam Datukok, yeah. Okay, so yeah, see so that if you refer to the archivist, means that as AP or George Chow, Makam Datukok yeah, is listed as category one. So as we refer to that guideline, okay, that is the one of the religious building. So category one, you cannot change the use. So and also need to preserve the spatial design, means that the space design of that building. Why we need to conserve all this space design? First, okay, we need to conserve the not only the building, we need to conserve the intangible part of okay. that that area. So that's why we need to conserve the ten, the building to host the intangible activity on that building. Uh, so this is the what without culture without the historical uh without the cultural significance of the heritage building it's actually not conservation it's just like we just uh, we just conserve a monument okay so i mean you have to consider the original usage of the building as well right when you're conserving like making sure that the original purpose of the building is conserved and continued throughout this new lifespan yeah, depends on the category of the uh, listing of uh, that building because before this thing they already have the con they go through the process evaluation process they have the consultation process everything they already study the background of that site everything that's why they are these are uh, these buildings are listed as heritage category one or category two mm, okay. okay all right thank Hope you that that um we have yeah i think that should be quite clear yeah, we have another one. Um, is Chinese metaphysics or sustainability have to be considered in the process of conservation? Like, uh, I mean, like feng shui or any other requirements, yeah. do you consider that as part and parcel yeah, of the actually, conservation? 
Yeah, actually not uh, considered. That is the part of that. If you see that the architectural styles of like, for example, okay, I say about the metaphysics, the feng shui part. Actually, why the guidelines say that the courtyard must be conserved? Okay, the actually not only the architectural style, but also in another 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 way, actually it just also conserve conserve the metaphysics part. Okay, like the opening, uh, the design of the building. Like for example, the gable, the, the gable wall design, the gable wall. Yes. We have to find elements, symbol that under the SAP, they also need to conserve that. That is a part of the metaphysics. This is the metaphysics. And when you talk about sustainability, sustainability, like the building material, why we need to conserve that? There previously we have the like the we have the the system totally different. We didn't have the like the very strong dam proof cost like the modern building. So how they, yes. they solve the damage problem? That's why they use lime plaster. And uh, also the brick. Okay. People always ask that. Why I cannot, the modern building can use a, a cement plaster. Why heritage <laughs> cannot use the cement plaster? First, the brick, the material is different. First thing, brick, previous brick is more brittle. The density is not good as good as the, the new brick. So how we protect these old elements, okay? So this is how we allow the that doesn't come out, we use lime plaster. Ah, this is sustainability. Uh, okay. Then the hot, uh, the, 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 the air well, we allow the stack effect. Okay, the, the hot air will go out. This is the wind. Yeah. That means from the wall, from the ground, escape from the wall, from the building, then through the air well there, air well, escape from the yeah. So this, yeah, this is cooling effect, this is sustainability. So ah, uh, actually okay. that, uh, I mean, you, so it's basically like, um, you're just making good of the original sustainability aspects and metaphysics that are already in the building, right? Would that be right? Yeah. Mm, like okay. for example, land, land is a green product, okay? Green yes. building material. New buildings, contemporary buildings actually have a lot of uh, contemporary buildings to use land as, uh, as their, uh, the, the, the material for plaster. Don't, don't forget that for cement, it's about more than 50% of the cement, actually the raw material is land. The uh, major okay. raw material for 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 cement, Portland cement is land. Okay, I, I think we have one last question. Okay, so what's the hardest project in your opinion? Uh, what's the hardest project in Penang? I would assume it's the level of conservation involved, uh. In your opinion, what's the hardest one, and maybe what's the most successful one in your opinion? Yeah, uh, hardest hardest project actually. All project uh throughout these twelve years uh, in my career here, actually uh every project is different. It's not a uh, differentiate with the uh by the skill of the project, but it's differentiate by the the information we can collect, we can compile from that project before we start uh the project, and also how to how to uh how how to make sure that the new the new use new proposal intention from the client can be fixed into a conservation project with and also fulfill all the guidelines if not fulfill all the guidelines how what is the what is the automation are uh, the, the solution what is the alternative uh, design or proposal uh, so this is a part in a project okay so you're saying like each project has its own unique set of challenges right yeah okay uh, i think we'll take uh, one last question uh, i think that should be it okay. okay so what's the future of building conservation like is vr doing anything or is it already in use are they like scanners like scanning everything the whole building at once so you minimize on the level of magic drawing that you have to do yeah yeah actually they already started have the or uh, this uh, for example the v the v uh, the vr and also they have actually uh in our our industry or they already have they are using laser scan not only laser scanner but also they have the like the software as a software to help them for example you snap photograph then from that photograph they upload to the cloud then they compile it then from use the, the software to process it that from photograph you can have the three-dimensional image for that building and you can measure from the the image so this help us to more bad um to have more, more better documentation mm, for conservation okay. project all right thank you one. i think we have one more last one okay, thank you uh do you have any technology in conservation and preservation i mean the newest technology like laser scanners gis yeah 
actually we already use uh, the digital scanner GIS and uh, geographical information system. I already use it. Mm. That, like for example, when do the inventory, like yes. uh, previously when I do the inventory for the for the uh, some price last time or uh, other 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 like the when prepare the inventory for one area, then then we use uh, GIS. And I previously have a project that sometimes this uh, conservation is not only architect, uh, engineer, conservator. Like previously I project uh, when I as a lead consultant, sometimes I will approach botanics because some heritage, some tree is heritage tree. So how we try to, uh, when we conserve building, we also conserve the tree. And also we also appoint or engage uh, archaeologists to help us. Like previously I do the like the for example like we conduct the geophysics. We need to use the radar to study the underground whether it's got tunnels or have any oh, work under okay. that building. Yeah, so we, we actually, have, uh, it's quite interesting. It's not like the old fashion, don't, don't think that the conservator is like old fashion, we just have whatever the old method. No, we actually, it, it depends a lot on the technology to help us. So whatever new technology the study. is available, you implement them because it's make the records more accurate, right? Like you were saying just now, yeah. like uh, you had to take that one meter by one meter square earlier. Yeah, and also help us, the technology help us, help us also, okay, more effective during the uh, Okay, I think uh, that's all the questions that we have from the floor. So once again, uh, Mr. CL, uh, Mr. Sinintan, uh, thank you for spending, I mean, yeah, for freeing welcome. up your time from your schedule to uh, educate us all on this very interesting topic. Hopefully we no, can we have you again and maybe you can explain a bit more deeper in depth about the special area plan in Penang, right? Because they know like, oh, okay, once you go into town, this area is under UNESCO, but they don't know exactly in detail what it is, what everything is in particular. Yeah, yeah, I think we can, uh, we can have another session that about the more to the guidelines, like how to restore, we can take examples of shop houses. Then when if oh. you restore the shop houses, not only the appearance, but sometimes it can be we change the, the, the flooring for the shop houses to be the RC flooring. Yeah, that is an interesting question. Uh, yes, definitely no. Okay. But for the new extension, uh, so we can start, we can discuss more about that. Mm. To change okay. everything, okay. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks everyone for coming, and hopefully, we'll see you guys around next time for our next session. All right, thank you guys. Bye. Okay. See you guys thank around. You, thank you. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.